The Rootburn Track is described by the DOC website as the ultimate alpine adventure, but obviously much much safer in summer. Emma Lang worked as a guide on the Rootman track for 10 years and was on the track just four days ago. I asked her to tell me about the Lake Mackenzie area where the hut is. It sits in a hanging valley, John, so um, it's sort of very uh, enchanting. It's quite a magical place, actually, Lake Mackenzie. It's not, not very far from the road end, but it's a wee bit of a hike and it's sort of about four, four and a half hours to get in there, but you have to climb up into this hanging valley and sort of drop down into the hut and it sits right beside an emerald lake and it's an amphitheatre of mountains and it is really, really stunning. It's it's no wonder it's a very, very popular destination, John. It's hugely popular because it's actually very accessible. Loads and loads and loads of people walk the route burn. You probably have. Um, but there is, I guess, a defining difference between the route burn and summer and getting into Lake Mackenzie in summer, which is very straightforward, great track, great infrastructure, and winter, which is a different beast altogether. I was actually just up there on Sunday, not to Lake Mackenzie, but the other end of the route burn, and there was a lot of snow. There is this time of the year, which which makes it a very different prospect. Actually. And if there's snow, there's ice, and does the track become slippery and dangerous because the root burn is regarded as fairly benign in terms of walking conditions over mm. summer, but over winter, does that just change materially? Yes, I think it does. I've been through there many times, uh, well, many times in winter as well as, as summer, and the track uh, does cut through a lot of avalanche paths. You've really got to have the skill set, John, to know how to manage a track in winter, which is why they close that, why Doc put the the clothes line up in winter because you do have to have the confidence you've got to have um yes the knowledge about how to move through snow it could be icy uh it's it's very very possible that the yeah that you'd have to negotiate a small avalanche or some ice or you've got to have your wits about you definitely so what's your take on this emma from from what little we know so far mm. it, it, is yeah. it possible that what has been described is exactly what happened. Yes, I would I would believe that a person would and it's obviously just supposition, but I could see someone staying put, being very intimidated by that place and not feeling confident and feeling in shock, feeling grief. You know, I think seeing something like that, losing a partner, there is a paralysis that goes with that uh, so you could think all right what's the best thing to do go nowhere and I'm in a heart great um, I would I would suggest that yeah she has just stayed put and in the hope that someone will come along but that's where um, my theory does unravel as does many people's because you do travel through people that do travel the route been in winter time I was there on Sunday but only to a small degree. So it's a nice challenge to people to go through. Why wouldn't she be seen? What stopped her from, yeah, finding someone else? Uh, th that's a real grey area, actually, um, for me. But we'll find out in due course, no doubt. Emma Lang, who was a guide on the route burn for uh, many years.